The moon has long been a body on which crater populations have been studied, from early telescopic observations over 400 years ago to the present day, different researchers and groups have worked to understand the impacts that pockmark our nearest neighbor. Over the years, many different people have cataloged craters on the moon, from early catalogs based on earthbound telescopes to more recent ones based on the latest lunar orbiting probes. One assumption in those catalogs is that any given researcher is going to identify the same craters, or at least do so with little variation from person to person. This was tested as part of a 1970 paper, but no exhaustive study of completely independent expert crater analysts has been published, until now. A new study is the first of its kind to examine how different, independent crater analysts will identify craters in a given region of the moon. This work had eight different expert analysts with five to over 50 years of experience, all studying the same region and looking for craters. What we found for this image, a saturated region of the lunar mare, was that experts can vary in their number by up to a factor of about two to three. This can be examined both in a simple size frequency distribution, or we can take the reduced catalog, produced through a DB scan clustering code custom written to handle these data, and divide everyone's size frequency crater data by that final reduced catalog. That lets us look at this figure, which shows how each individual researcher varies as a fraction of the reduced catalog as a function of diameter. We can then take the average spread and calculate standard deviation envelopes as a function of diameter, showing the one sigma spread in number of craters found by the eight analysts as a function of diameter. What this demonstrates is that there is a roughly plus or minus 25% one sigma uncertainty on these crater counts. What makes this NAC terrain study truly unique is that not only did we study how well professional researchers vary, but we also looked at minimally trained volunteers using CosmoQuest's Moon Mappers project. This project asks volunteers from around the world to identify craters and other features on the moon to help us do scientific research. This is the first paper to come out of this work, and one of our first conclusions is that even though there is typically more variation from one volunteer to the next, the power of crowdsourcing means that the overall average of volunteers is within the range of experts. In fact, not only is it within the range of experts, but it is very close to the average of the eight professionals who also examined this region of the lunar surface. We did this study among the professional researchers not only with a NAC image, but also a WAC image that covered both Mare and Highlands terrain in a region along the south rim of Mare Crisium. We can perform the same size frequency data analysis that we did with the NAC image, this time for Mare and Highlands material, and they show markedly different results. We were very good at reproducing each other's Mare data, the spread being only about plus or minus 15%, although it was diameter dependent, or at least dependent on the number of craters found per diameter. The Highlands results show that we had a plus or minus 35 to 45 percent one sigma spread, independent of crater diameter. We studied these data in several other ways, including by spread in diameter and location measurements and the dependence on preservation state. In a more cautionary part of this study, we also looked at artifacts near the minimum crater diameter, for the NAC image, the CosmoQuest interface allows volunteers to identify craters as small as 18 pixels, so we asked experts to also give a complete count to that diameter. All independently achieved that by trying to be complete to a few pixels smaller than 18. The only instructions for the WAC image were to identify craters to the diameter that they are comfortable, and where do they estimate that they are complete in their counts. What we found here was that the methods varied widely for estimating completeness, and half estimated that they were complete to a smaller diameter than they actually were, at least based on the ensemble data. The conclusion is that one must be very cautious in how they estimate their completeness diameter and err on the conservative side. There are many conclusions from this work, and there is still much work to be done. Key among our results are first, that minimally trained volunteers are, as an ensemble, as good as expert analysts at identifying crater populations. Second, we found that experts varied in their crater counts by up to a factor of 2 to 3, with a 1 sigma spread of 15 to 45 percent, depending on terrain and number of craters overall. When we applied standard age modeling techniques, this meant that ages varied by over 1 billion years, with error bars that did not overlap. 
Third, the oft-quoted square root of n error bars based on counting statistics are minimum error bars, and the uncertainty just based on researcher variation alone should be considered to be a minimum of plus or minus 15%. And four, we found significant artifacts near the minimum crater diameter, and we found that a, if one wants to be complete to a given diameter, then they should try to be complete to at least a few pixels smaller than that, and b, crater identifications just a few pixels across are very unlikely to be accurate. This work with our other conclusions is published in Icarus, and as supplemental material, we have included the crater counting images. We hope that others will use these images as calibration sites in training not only new crater analysts, but also automated computer algorithms. We request that any calibration data that you gather with these images, that you send it to the corresponding author for follow-up work in the future. This work was supported by NASA, the NASA Lunar Science Institute, and the Maryland Space Grant. It was done in cooperation with CosmoQuest, and CosmoQuest's creation was supported by NASA and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Education and Public Outreach team.